Hi, in this video we're going to be sharing with you some proven tips on the best ways to fast track and grow a profitable property portfolio. Indeed, we'll show you some actionable tips on how to overcome challenges and most importantly show you why this is something we think is worth doing. I've consistently grown a profitable property portfolio over the last two decades. Adam's doing the same thing now. There's no magic silver bullet, it's just a series of small things and that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Jess. I'm Adam. And we're landlords as well as letting agents. We're managing and growing our own portfolios as well as those for uh, our clients as the lettings business. Um, we make videos like these to be helpful to landlords like you. Hopefully you'll find it useful and uh, we want you to be successful, earn more, have less hassle and get your time Indeed. back. So, so recently we hosted a, a live webinar uh, for some um, inner circle members of For The Landlords, that they, they've joined For The Landlords. Um, it's something we do often, just be helpful, we like to be helpful. Free um, as well. It's free. In, in the audience there was a mixture of experienced landlords and beginners and also people who hadn't even bought their first property yet. They all had one thing in common, they were feeling a little bit frustrated, they'd signed up to this webinar so they were feeling a little bit frustrated uh, with how slow their property portfolio was growing. Some were yep. struggling, struggling to get it going, some were struggling to get it going fast enough, um, all sorts of different situations but uh, yeah, one thing in common, they'd asked for some proven techniques to grow the property portfolio. What was identifying, what was holding people back and then the barriers and give us some tips. So um, Adam and I, we thought about the questions yep. uh, before the before it and there were essentially four, um, four key points, four key points <clears throat> that we had to make uh, and we've broken it up for you today now into four videos. So here's what Adam and I had to say to our live audience. We'll cut to that now, hope you've enjoyed the video. Number two? Yeah. Second point, so. Cash is king. Cash really is king. Mm. And there's a bit more we're gonna dig into on that, but you've heard it, cash is king. Of course, you can't buy uh, houses with buttons, unfortunately. <laughs> um, you need a bit. Now, how you get that first initial, you'd call it seed capital, wouldn't you? Work hard, save and invest. Very few people do that. Lots, lo loads of people work hard, you know that, of course they do. Um, you can work hard do whatever you're doing all day long. Um, you've got to save, very few people save. I think the average savings in the UK is under eight weeks. That means that if somebody loses their job, they wouldn't be able to pay the mortgage after week nine. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That's just scary, but it's true. Um, and lots of people do save. You know, if you've got a good savings habit, well done. <clears throat> but then the thing you've got to do then is, is invest. Yeah. Otherwise you're just sat there you know, not doing much at all. You have got to Losing your savings to inflation, yeah. basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So work hard, save and invest is the, is the mantra, and that gives you a little bit of cash, uh, hopefully. Um, but when we're saying cash is king, it's more, more than that. It's about maximising it, keeping it, preserving it so you don't lose some, don't lock stuff away. I mean, mm. you could be getting richer in terms of equity and money on paper on your balance sheet, but cash we're talking about, having... The, the the cash, the lifeblood to keep things moving, keep things moving forward. Um, you've got to keep that capital, which is cash at the moment time when it's in the bank. When you put it into the property, it becomes equity, you could call it that. You've got to be able to keep it moving. And um, that's one part of it. We'll talk sure. about that a bit more. Uh, and then the other part of it is is uh, is maximising, making sure that it, it's growing. So um, I wrote down a few things here. Don't be scared to remortgage your print, your house, your own home. Yeah, sounds a bit scary. I mean, you know, put, giving personal guarantees and um, you know, risking your life savings, risking the the home you're in is not something you should do lightly, for sure. Don't. Um, but, but remortgaging your own personal house is the cheapest money you'll ever borrow. Yep. That's just a fact. It is because it's, it's, it's personal. The mortgage you'll get on it is the cheapest. Um, the way I personally view it, because I've done this. Um, so you live in a house. You've got, maybe you've got a mortgage on it or you haven't, but we're talking about putting a mortgage on it and pulling the money out. So there was a point when I had this house, this one we're sat in now, um, owned it in cash, put a mortgage on it and took that money out and it sat in the bank. Now at that point, I don't feel like I've taken a massive risk because 
there's a there's an equity hole in my house, but I've got the same equivalent amount of money sure. sat in the bank. And then what I did is bought buy to let properties in cash. So let's say I had chunk, the average kind of house is about 100 grand at that point, and you know you buy a hundred thousand pound buy to let, and I've got a hundred thousand pound hole in my house that I live in. Hundred thousand pound buy to let. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm, you know, I'm taking any more risk. That's an income producing asset, whereas the home you own isn't. So I actually felt like I was up. And we'll talk about buying the right house in the right area and doing all the right things. I ended up up on the deal because you know my house that I live in is not going up in value massively. Much is not going up like, like the ones we buy to, to, to do as investments. Mm. So yeah, we, we could do better. So remortgaging your principal private residence really, really helps. Remortgage anything else I put. Oh yeah. Literally anything else. Yeah. And get definitely. used to it. If you're a landlord, debt management and having um uh the come here, Mabel. Got a little got a little visitor. Um getting used to having a, a balance sheet that's got equity, property you own, um, so property you own, equity and um uh, mortgages on it just get used to it get used to good debt management and feel comfortable with that so remortgage stuff and get used to remortgaging as well if you've bought the right <clears throat> the right rental properties you can refinance them multiple times mm -hmm. because you bought it well it's going up in value every year so you should be looking to constantly assess your portfolio and see where you can be taking equity to buy the next one there might be a time where you decide to stop doing that, but then you probably have reached somewhere close to your plan and your goal, right? So, if we summarise the first three points, and there's another three points coming after this on the same on the same topic, cash is king. So, work hard, save, invest, remortgage your principal private residence, remortgage anything else. And I've summarised that about uh, under get the ball rolling. Mm. So, get things moving. It's hard to get things moving. That initial inertia... It's hard to get things moving. If you can do those three things, scrape well, together also, everything well, you've got I would and add get one thing to that. Go on then. So you might not have anything to remortgage, right? But if you put yourself out there a little bit, you'll very soon find someone who will lend you the money mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, a joint venture partner. Yeah. You've got a guy who's a yeah. kind of a JV partner who will lend yeah. money. He just wants to lend money. Yeah. Uh, he's almost like a private bridging loan, isn't it, in a way? Yeah. Um, you can get your hands on other people's money um, to invest in property in your own name. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people out there that will loan you money for a percentage. If you've got nothing to remortgage and you've got a small amount of savings, get yourself out there. Yep, definitely. Get the ball rolling. So that's number one. Uh, the, the, the the next bit is keep the ball rolling. Mm. Um, I, yeah. I would say, I mean, the, the, yeah, it, I I the, the title was how how proven techniques to grow your property portfolio, and I've grown a property portfolio quick. I grew a property portfolio about as quick as I think that you can by using the money you've got. I mean, of course, if I just had a load of money pouring in, I was just buying a, buying up properties with, with, and I didn't have that. I had an initial seed seed capital. I have topped it up over time but only from work, from job, from the business we run. And I've grown a property portfolio about as quick as I think anybody can. I kept the rents in, and every time I refinanced, I kept that capital back in to go again. And, I mean, that that is, talking about proven techniques, mm. that's what does it. Yeah. Lots of landlords you'll speak to, and it's fine. And look, if this is your choice and you're at that point and that's what you need to do, any of those things, then that's fine. But you, you speak totally. to a landlord and they say, right, well, I want to make five grand a month within a year or mm. whatever. And you can see they can actually do that. But if they did that, kept the five grand in, they'd be pretty quickly at 10 grand a month. Yeah. And then they've got the five grand and they've got five grand to play with and they can actually keep going. Totally. So if you sort of really load up your portfolio and um, try and live on it too soon, yep. that'll slow things Definitely. down. Definitely. Which sounds obvious, but lots of people do. So keep the rents in. And keep the uh, well plan plan to remortgage, and when you do remortgage, don't spend it. Keep it in. There. Yeah, definitely. That's um, the snowball effect. It gets easier as you go. Yep, five plus five plus houses. I think. Do you want to explain that? That is that, that's very true. It, 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 yeah, it kind of does. It does revolve around how much you cash you had to start with, but <clears throat> let's use two hundred k as the starting base. Each time you, each time we source a property for for somebody, 
and renovate and then refinance it, at the refinance point, they'll get a large chunk of the initial investment back out through the mortgage loan and probably have tied up about 15K um, in the deal. So the, the pot's depleting each time by 15 grand, but anywhere from 160 to 200K, once you've done five properties, your pot's depleted to the point where you kind of just about have enough to do mm. one if you've not mm. been topping it back up. Um, but you've got the rental profit from the houses that you've bought, if you've kept all of that, that's there. You've got equity growth in the five that you've bought, so that's there. You can, at the point where you're doing the sixth one, if you took out a two-year fix, you're on the first couple, you're perhaps at the point where they can be refinanced again. They've achieved some capital growth. That tops the pot back up. And the sixth, seventh, eighth one are being bought with momentum from the, the initial mm. pot and the profit and the equity growth from the first few. And then that's what I mean by five, it gets mm. easier. Um, I'm listening. Hopefully to you that makes sense. Like, yeah, it does definitely makes sense. If it doesn't pop any questions in, speak to Adam one-to-one. -one, but... Um, I'm listening to you say that, and that relies so much on, well, the first point about having a plan, and, and the thing that we're going to talk about in a minute, point three, I'll, I'll sort of give it away, is buy the right stuff. Okay, so we're going to yeah, talk about buying right stuff. Now, of course it if you were buying, if you didn't have a plan, you'd be buying the wrong stuff, mm -hmm. and that whole cycle, the repeatability of it, just gets broken because oh, I'm waiting for planning permission on that, or I'm waiting mm. for this to happen, or. That yield on that I one bought this work. house well, blind at an auction yeah. and it cost me 20 grand more yeah. to renovate. Well, yeah. That sort of nonsense, it's yeah. It's to do yeah. with consistency. We'll come on to that buying the right stuff, but um, yeah, that, that it, 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 when we talk about cash being king, preserving it, keeping things moving, getting used to financing, refinancing, going again, um, keeping the renting, keeping the, the capital in on the refinances. Yeah means that for the first one, two, three, four, five properties, it's tough, honestly, it is tough. If you've only got a constrained capital pot, you're always gonna feel, I think, a bit frustrated, I did, mm -hmm. feel frustrated building it. As soon as you've got five, six, seven, it's like, do you know what, things are getting easier every day. Um, that the next house, as long as you keep the same cadence, the same amount of properties, and I didn't, I always kept frustrated, kept frustrated because I tried to buy more and more as I kept going. But if you keep the same cadence of, of property purchases, then, as the rents come in and, and you keep them in, things will get easier. Yeah. Um, your, your snowball builds. Right then. Number number three. Give us a like, follow, join the join the channel, join us, sign up on our on our website, forthelandlords.com, to our mailing list, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, like any all all the social media platforms. And Ring the bell, oh, yeah, ring likey, that. thumbs up, all those things. It really helps us if you're getting value out of the channel, please subscribe and show your support. Indeed.